Hey there, welcome to this tutorial. In this beginner level project, we are going to build a very simple web scraping app using Python. We'll use it to scrape job postings on the Hacker News forum and analyze which programming languages are the most in demand for that month. As usual, you'll find the source code for this project in the description below. To follow along with this project, you will need to know some basic Python. It's also helpful to know a little bit about HTTP requests and HTML. Here's a rough overview of what our app would do. It's going to be a single Python script that sends an HTTP request to a website. We will then receive a raw HTTP response, which we will then need to parse using a library called Beautiful Soup, so that we turn that raw response into structured data that we can use. We'll then process that structured data in our script, first to identify the text content of each unique job post, and then to count the occurrences of certain keywords in that post. Finally, we'll use another library, matplotlib, to visualize our results. Before we start, I want to emphasize that with projects like this, you have to be mindful about what you do. Although web scraping isn't illegal, it does upset a lot of businesses, especially if it generates extra work for their server, or if the way you use their data puts them at a disadvantage. So please keep that in mind as you start this project. But with that said, most sites won't actually mind if you scrape their public pages for educational purposes, as long as you don't overdo it. So with that out of the way, I think we can now get started with the coding. So here I am in my project folder. It's just a new GitHub directory. I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code and create my scraper file. So this entire project is going to be happening in one script. I'm just going to call it scraper.py. And then uh, with this, I'm just going to write the main function. So I like to start my projects with a hello world just so that I can easily run and test it as I'm building it out. And we can run it like this, which we'll is type Python or scraper.py. So I see my hello world um, and everything's running fine there. So I want to scrape this website, this hacker news website, news.ycombinator.com. This is kind of like a forum post where people can post uh, different things and articles and there's comments. But every month there is a post on Hacker News uh, called Ask HN Who is Hiring. And this month is January 2022. So this is the most recent post. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see an example of what the post looks like. It has name of the company and then some expectations. And then usually there's a, a list of different technologies that they are using. A couple of things to notice that uh, aside from the top level post with the jobs uh, being offered, there is also comments like these, which aren't a job, but they might also have keywords in them. So as we scrape this, we want the top level comments, but we don't want any of these nested comments. So this is, yeah, so this is pretty much the data I'm going to be dealing with. I'm going to read all of this at once and try to look through each of these job posts to figure out what type of technology is trending or what's the most popular for this month. And if you want to try more recent data, um, you can just search for this uh, Ask HN Who is Hiring in the Hacker News uh, search feature below. So if you run that, you should get a list uh, that you can sort by popularity or by the date of recent postings. So for this one, I'm going to copy this link here, which is the January 2022, the most recent post, and put that into my app. So I'm going to call it URL and then just put this link here. I'm going to print. If I run it again, then I can see that link is there. The next thing I have to do is um, actually retrieve the contents of this link. So I could do that with a request library. I'll have to install it first. I can, I can do that by typing pip install and then request. So once that's done, I can import it and use it to query this URL. And if you want to know how requests work, then you can just type in request documentation. And that will give you some quick start examples and how to use it there. But for this one, we're just going to do something very simple. We're just going to get this HTTP. So all we need is just this top line over here. 
and then we're just going to get our URL. We we'll also need to store the response, so we'll do it like this. And then I can also print the response here so we can see what that looks like. So now if I run that again, well, we get a response object with the 200 status code, uh, but we don't actually know the contents of this. So if we want to know the contents, we actually have to do response.content. So let's try that. And I'm actually going to run this in my terminal window instead of the integrated one, um, just because then we can see more of the output. Okay, so the response content itself is just, it's this entire HTML. It's quite clunky, but you can already see parts of the content is in there, but it's interrupted by these tags and all this stuff. So we can't really do anything with this. Uh, it's kind of looks like the matrix. We have to break it up first, and then we have to be able to figure out which of these chunks corresponds to one unique post because we, we want to analyze the data per post. So to do that, we need yet another library. Uh, this one is called beautiful soup, which will let us parse the data. So you can go and type beautiful soup into Google if you want to uh, read the documentation. And there's a quick start guide as well. So this is what we're going to be using. So first we'll install beautiful soup. So first we'll install beautiful soup, pip install beautiful soup for just run that. We go back here in beautiful soup. We kind of create this soup object based on the, the raw text data that we get out of this response content. And we also need to give it a parser. So in this case, we want to give it an HTML parser because this response data is an HTML response. It's got the HTML tag there. So we'll go ahead and do that. Well, first we have to import it. And then we can use it. And here is how we can specify the parser. So going back to the documentation, you can see the example there. And we can actually access different parts of the HTML from the soup object. It actually creates the structure for us. Um, just to compare, if we actually go to the page itself and we want to see what the HTML looks like, you can go to right click and view page source. And it will come up with something like this, which is what we saw earlier. So this is the raw content that we get. Uh, so each of these tags has a structure to it. And beautiful soup just makes it so that we can traverse this data structure in a way that's easier for us to use in Python. So we can find uh, certain classes, certain elements, certain IDs. And this is how we're going to identify each of these job posts. So to do that, first of all, I'm going to right click and inspect this page because I want to find out if there's any kind of class or ID I can use to identify a particular job post. So let's take this job listing here. I can already see that there is a comment class there. So if I find all divs or all elements with a class comment, I think I will be able to get all of these job posts. But then the problem is I'm also going to get these things, which I think also count as comments. So we look at them there. Yeah, so this is a comment as well. And I don't really want to have anything that's not at the top level. Okay, but for now, let's just get all of these comments and then we'll deal with these sub comments later. So to do that in beautiful soup, let's first find all the comments, which we might be able to do by using this. Find all then class comment. So this will find all elements where the class name is common. And the reason we need this trailing underscore here is of course the word class is a reserved keyword in Python. You see how my syntax highlights it differently. It means that we can't use this like any other uh, variable name or attribute name, which is why we need this underscore. So this should give me a list of elements. I do like this. I'm not going to print out the elements because it's just going to be a big blob of text, but let's see if I can just print out the number of elements. That might give me a better idea how many elements I'm dealing with, so if I'm on the right track or not. So 
So let me run this again. And I have 250 elements. Judging by the size of this post, that seems about right. Now let's actually deal with these nested comments. I mean, I think it depends on the side, for, but this one in particular, I need to identify some something I could use um, in terms of its structure to figure out whether something is a root level comment like this one or somebody else has commented here. So I actually noticed that these things are a bit indented than usual, and they also have a parent, whereas the root one doesn't have a parent. It's I guess it's just parented to the thread, uh, but these ones have a parent. Uh, there's a root as well, so maybe those are different things we can identify. But I think the easiest thing here is to look for this indentation. So if I look here with my selector, I can actually find this element, and it's a uh, the class is called indent. Well. IND, and then the indent level is one. But if I compare it to the one above it here, I've also got IND, but the indent is zero. So my plan right now is to identify all classes with IND where the indent is also zero. And that should give me all of these elements um, that have these job posts. But Obviously, this one itself doesn't actually have any information. It's just got the indentation. So I need to identify these first and then find the comment that's part of this. The comment isn't a child of this, though, but it is the next comment element because I think that from the structure, all of the comments are preceded by an indent element. I can do something like, okay, let's find this indentation that is zero. So I know that that's the root and then find the next common element after that, but not any other ones. So I'll find each of these zero element indents and then find the next level comment, which I think you can do using beautiful soup. Um, there is a find all, which we use um, earlier, but I think there's also a find next. Okay, so there's a find next sibling. So uh, I'm going to try a combination of that. Now, if anybody knows a better way to parse this using beautiful soup, then let me know. But this is kind of my hacky strategy um, I came up with just to solve this problem for the time being. All right, so let's try to implement that now. So instead of finding all classes comment, I want to find all classes indent where the indent level is zero. So I don't want any of the things that are more than one level deep. And now I can, for each of these elements, I want to find the next one. So find next, uh, I don't know, I have to use find next sibling. I mean, it's not really a sibling. If we look at this structure here, this indent, this, I guess the siblings have to be on the same level, but this is actually one level down. This is inside the default. I don't know, maybe there's something that goes past this structure. I will actually have a look. Okay, so we actually do have it just a fine next. Um, these methods use next element to iterate whatever tags and strings that come after it in the document. Find all next returns all matches and find next only returns the first match. So that sounds like the one we want. So we are gonna use find next to find the first match. So not find next sibling, just find next on its own. And then this one, we can say class equals comments. I can't, I don't think I can do this because this is a list. So I have to iterate through the list and do it on each element in the list. So uh, I can use list comprehension for that. I can do something like E for E in elements. And then this whole thing needs to be inside the array notation, whoops, so that it's doing list comprehension. So this will iterate through each element in this elements list that has uh, been anchored at indent zero. So these are all the root comments. And for each of those elements, we're gonna find the next div that is called comment. So that should essentially give me this, a list of all top level comments only. And we can test that out by checking whether well, I think we saw for the number of elements was 250. So actually, I don't need a new print statement. I'm going to count the number of comments I find. And I just expect this to be a little bit less than 250. So we'll try it again and see if that actually works. 
Okay, so we've eliminated 40 comments that were not at the root level. So I, I'm pretty confident now that this is the data we need. So now we have the comments, I guess they should correspond to the text inside each of these posts. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually print this out to verify that it is indeed this text, just so I can sort of get a sanity check on my data. So I'm just gonna go and print comments. Or actually I might loop through them and print them because I'm gonna need this loop structure anyway. Comment in comments print comment like this. Okay, now I don't need this one anymore. So let's go ahead and run it again. And now I can actually see a sample of the comments. Actually, let's run it in this terminal so we get more space. Okay, so I actually see that it is the text that I want. And it's a lot cleaner now because we're only looking at this element and none of the other HTML elements. However, I still do have a lot of HTML artifacts like these tags and stuff here and this span and all this stuff. I do want to get rid of that. So I think that beautiful soup also has a get text function. If you only want the human readable text inside a document or tag, you can use the get text method. It returns all the text in the document or beneath the tag. So let's try to apply that and see what it looks like. I'm gonna run that again. Okay, so this looks a lot better. This is actually human readable now and there's not a bunch of tags and ugly HTML stuff in the way. So actually now I feel like I can use this data. So what I wanna do here is I wanna find out how often each technology is mentioned. So actually I, I wanna maybe just limit it to programming languages. So I wanna look in each of these comments and see um, how many times a language is like Python, for example, is mentioned or JavaScript or maybe C. So what I'll do is I'm gonna create a map of different languages I'm interested in. And then for each of these comments, I'm gonna scan the words for occurrences of that um, language, which in this case, it's just a string key. And then uh, I'm gonna count them. And I'm also gonna count each keyword once for each unique post because I don't want a post that mentions, for example, JavaScript several times to count as three different things. I, I want to only count it once saying that, hey, this post is interested in JavaScript and that's all I need to know. That's like one, one point for that language. So first of all, let's, let's create this map and let's try to count that. Also, one more thing I want to show you here is that this is actually, this is case sensitive if we do these comparisons, string operations. So it might be useful to actually lowercase everything just says so because we care about the characters and we don't care if somebody spells JavaScript with a capital J or a lowercase j. Uh, we might also need to get rid of things like commas and um, full stops so that we can parse this and scan this uh, a bit more effectively. So the first step in that plan is to actually declare the keywords that we want to look for. And these can be anything, but for this one, I'm gonna just use programming languages because it's pretty easy. However, if you're feeling experimental, you can change this to things like React or AWS or Azure or things like that if you wanna count different aspects of technology in this job post. But let's just try with something basic. So obviously we're gonna look for Python and I'm gonna set all of these to zero at the beginning, by the way, because this is where I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this as a dictionary where I'm counting the occurrence of these keywords. So everything's gonna start at zero. Okay, so this is the final map 
of uh, or dictionary of the languages I want to scan in each of these comments. Now I'll go to my comment text and I'm going to lowercase it. Uh, yeah, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to actually lowercase it, uh, which all strings have this function you can use. So this returns a string and all strings have a function you can use on it, which is lower, which is just turns everything into a lowercase. So I've turned the comment text into a lowercase version of it, which uh, solves the problem of case sensitivity for us. The next thing we want to do is find occurrences of these words inside the comment and only find them once. I can do that in several ways, but the first thing I'm probably going to need to do is break the comment up into uh, a list of words or at least a collection of words. So with strings, we can do that by splitting it. Well, if we do comment text dot split, and then we want to split it on, for example, that. Um, this will create an array where each of these things split by the white space are going to be elements. So I want to show you what that looks like. Well, actually, I have to call this words like that. Run that. So now if I run that, I don't, I shouldn't get a paragraph like this anymore. I should get a bunch of arrays with words in them. Okay, so now we have this arrays with the words in them. We have to be careful because some of these words also have these, you know, they can have artifacts at the end of them, like uh, punctuations like that. So yeah, and we also have words that are repeating. So we only want to count things once. So yeah, we definitely have to clean this up a little bit more. We can do that by actually stripping using the strip function uh, to strip the words. So we can do that for each word. So if this is a string here, we can use the string strip function. And then in this, we can just place all the characters we want to strip away from that uh, at the start or at the end. So I'm just going to put a bunch of different characters that I don't want to appear in my words, and that should take care of it. And also I'm using this list comprehension so that we can operate on each element of this. We can actually also do this with the, I think the map function in Python, but uh, we already, I mean, we already used this notation before, so I just want to keep it simple. So if I run this again, I should get the same results, but then with less of these weird characters. Okay, so I have stuff like this now. Um, but now this is a list and this is, I mean, you can have a lot of stuff repeating in list. So I actually want to turn this into something that I can just look at it once and say whether or not my keywords are in that data structure. With a list, I have, I, I have to potentially go through each element one by one. So to do this, we can turn this into either a dictionary or a set, um, but we don't need the value component of this data structure. So a set should be good enough because that still gives us very fast lookup time. Uh, so to do that with list comprehension is actually really nice. All I have to do is just turn my square bracket into the curly brackets. And instead of being a list now, this will become a set. If I run this again, you can actually see that it deduplicates all the words so that each um, paragraph being printed out will only have a set of the unique words inside them like this. And now with that, I can go through my keywords and check if it exists inside this set. So I'm going to delete this print because I don't think I need that anymore. And then I'm going to search for K in keywords. I'll have to loop through each of these. Uh, this will give me the key. Then if the key is also in this word set, then I add one point to this data structure. Okay, now this will ensure that each keyword is only counted once per job post, because this is a set, so it can only appear once anyway. So then we're going to loop through each of these Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, and then each time it appears in this set, we add one to the score. So if I run that now, and I will print out the keywords at the end, we should see the final results. Okay, and there you go. We've got 34 posts with Python, 14 with JavaScript, 28 with TypeScript, 
12 with Ruby, 11 with Java, 11 with Rust, and 2 with C Sharp. Now this result is already quite useful, but if we do want to take it to the next level, um, we can also try visualizing this in a graph. So to do that, I'm going to need yet another dependency, and this one is called matplotlib. And this is the most popular plotting library in Python, so we use that. And we can pip install it. So once that's installed with pip, we're ready to use it. As with the other libraries, you can have a look at how to use this by just typing matplotlib into Google and then there's going to be a bunch of documentation and tutorial links on how to create things like a bar graph. So things like that here, um, which is exactly kind of what we want to do. So to use it, we'll first have to import it at the top here. And then I think I can just use this. I think the simplest way to start with this is actually um, just to type plot and then bar. Uh, and then we, we basically provide two lists, uh, what's going to be on the x axis and what's going to be on the y axis. So we actually already have this here on my x axis, I want these, uh, these keys. And then on the y axis, I want whatever number value uh, those are. So because this is a dictionary, we actually have built in functions, we can get that information pretty easily. So the first one is just keys, and that will return a list like co a collection. And then the other one is values. And I can even add labels to it as well, uh, like this. Okay, so the x axis is the language, and then the y label is mentions, maybe number of mentions. And then we can just show our graph type like this. So let's run that again and see if we can actually visualize our data. And there you go. Um, we have the same data printed out here, but now we also actually get to visualize it in the form of a graph. And with this, you can actually save it to a PNG. You can change the colors and do all sorts of things with it. So this is how you can use a web scraper, um, process the data, and also create some kind of useful output from it. This brings us to the end of this short project. There's a lot of places you can go from here. You could try adapting the scraper to a different URL source, such as financial data. You could also try turning this into a serverless API on AWS Lambda so that you can integrate it as part of a larger application. And finally, if you find websites that have a lot of JavaScript or are difficult to scrape from the HTML alone, you can look into using a web driver like Selenium, which will allow you to interact with the site and do things like logging in and clicking links. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching.